How long have I been on the someone trade for Eric Bledsoe bandwagon? And now it seems like it's finally going to happen as Bledsoe had potentially the greatest NBA tweet of all time outside of Joel Embiid and Hassan Whiteside roasting each other where he said, I don't want to be here anymore. And then his excuse was maybe the worst one ever where he says he was with his girlfriend at a hair salon. I don't know about that one, Bledsoe. But I do know that you're one of the better point guards in the NBA. And I think the interesting thing with Bledsoe is how much better will he be on a team that has more talent? Because if you look at Bledsoe, one of the criticisms you could throw at him is his outside jumper has been not really the best in the NBA. If he's on a team that has more creating around him and more guys that the other team has to care about, maybe his three-point shot could be better. I would like to see his defense go back to the level it was when he was on the Clippers, where he was really like a ball hawk. Past couple of seasons in Phoenix, he hasn't been bad, but he's definitely been worse. Kind of understandable given the situation of the team. Maybe on a better one, he'd be more energized on the defensive side of the floor. As a playmaker and all that, I mean, Bledsoe's fine. If we're looking at some of the other things, he's going to be 28 years old, I believe in December. Pretty early into this season. And then you ask, well, how much longer does he really have? He's also got about two years left on his contract. He's also had some injury history. So the team trading for him should know that they are going to soon be in a position where they have to give a 30-year-old point guard who's been hurt a few times in their career a decent payday on a perhaps lengthy contract, maybe three or four seasons. And I think these are all factors you have to look at when you're looking at potential suitors for Eric Bledsoe because... I've seen some of the rumors and some of the teams involved and the players that could be going back to Phoenix. And I'm not exactly on board with all of it. I like Eric Bledsoe, no doubt, but I think the situation given his age and contract, it has to be kind of particular. So if we dive into that one, I think one team that has really been in the thick of the rumors has been the Milwaukee Bucks. And Giannis is having... A hell of a season. I mean, the dude may be the best player in the NBA up to this point. It's been like four games, so let's not go crazy, and the guy hasn't done it in the playoffs. But for this particular moment, he's just having an incredible season. One dude who I'm seeing in the rumors a lot is Malcolm Brogdon. Here's the thing. I think Malcolm Brogdon is a great fit with the Milwaukee Bucks. He is not as good of an attacker as Bledsoe is. He's probably not as good of a defender as Bledsoe is, assuming Bledsoe returns to at least close to what he once was as a defender if he was on this Bucks team. But Brogdon is a significantly better shooter, and I could see the argument in that making him a better fit with Giannis, but I also think he's on the career arc of Giannis as well, given that he's 25 years old and Giannis is what? 23, 24, something like that. So those are some potentially some red flags. I think Chris Middleton is off limits 100% because the dude's like 6'7", defends a whole lot of positions and can shoot from outside. He's perfect from this Milwaukee team and I'm not trading him at all. And while Tony Snell is not Chris Middleton, I wouldn't even love trading him away in a move like this, especially if you paired him up with like a Brogdon. He was one of the best role players in the league last season. Thon Maker, if you trade him away, who the hell else is your center? It's not John Henson, it's not Greg Monroe. I just, there's a lot of dudes on this Milwaukee team who I really would not like trading away for Eric Bledsoe. Uh, now, again, is Bledsoe a fine player? Yeah, and I think the immediate impact with him and Giannis could be good. Now, Bledsoe likes to attack the basket. Giannis does the same thing as well, and I mean, at a certain point, you are going to need shooters around Giannis, and if you were to lose Malcolm Brogdon and get Eric Bledsoe in return, I mean, you do lose that guy who can play off of Giannis. Now, of course, Bledsoe, like I mentioned, could his three-pointer improve if he gets more open shots? It could. I've already seen Brogdon shoot really well from three. Also, he could attack off of closeouts, Bledsoe. Sure, but it's not perfect, is the thing I'm getting at. Now, if it ended up being Greg Monroe's expiring and a draft pick, okay, now we're talking. Maybe that's the best offer Phoenix could get. I don't know. The other thing I could potentially see is with Jabari Parker, not him being traded, but maybe Milwaukee would get really desperate because they want that second star player because Jabari's been hurt. 
I hope they wouldn't do that. I hope they're still going to be in the long term with this team because I know Giannis is great right now, but I just hope they don't get desperate because they see Jabari out and they go, oh crap, we have to make some sort of a move. There's a whole bunch of guys in this Milwaukee team that I think play really well together and they're all in the same career arc. Now there's another team, and that would be the Denver Nuggets that have been involved in a lot of rumors. I do not want them to trade Jamal Murray because I think Murray is a perfect fit off of Paul Millsap and Jokic given his jump shot. Now hopefully that jump shot is legit because he was pretty inconsistent with it in his rookie season and to open up his second year it has not been good at all. But giving up on a guy four games into his second season is just ridiculous and I would hope that Denver realizes that one. Now the other guy is Emmanuel Moutier who I would be more content with Denver trading away. I mean if it was Moutier one of their first round picks moving forward they actually have all of their picks so maybe you give them one and you place some protections on another maybe some second round picks in there as well as Kenneth Fareed who actually makes the salary work and I think his energy could actually help out the Phoenix Suns quite a bit I think then we're in the the realm of a trade and Eric Bledsoe he kind of is just a better version of Emmanuel Moutier a significantly better version of Moutier way better defensively solid playmaker and his ability to attack and all that and I think when it comes to Bledsoe doing his thing which is beating guys off the dribble playing and pick and rolls being effective in transition I think he'd be totally fine with the Denver Nuggets my questions would be how he plays off of the other guys uh, specifically the center who's going to have the ball a lot in his hand and Nikola Jokic because with Jokic the big thing is how much shooting is around him Paul Millsap's three-point shot is already kind of iffy given that it dropped off last season for Atlanta. I would put Bledsoe's three-pointer into the same kind of stratosphere as that one. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not on. I don't know if it'd be a perfect fit with his jumper, but at the same time, I think the positive of him just being a creator and everything he does, I think it would outweigh that. And I think the perfect situation for Denver would be trading away Moutier, Fareed, and then still having Jamal Murray in their back pocket. I think that would be a perfect situation for them. Defensively, of course, Bledsoe along with Paul Millsap could make them pretty damn good. I like Denver the most. I think they're the team that can make it work. And I like the fit with them more than Milwaukee. Because I think the Nuggets can make the move and still have enough stuff for the future. We can talk about the New York Knicks real quick. I mean, their point guard situation is currently Ramon Sessions. And then Frank Nielakina, who's in his rookie season. I would not give up Nielakina if I was the Knicks. Mainly because I just don't think Bledsoe is on the career arc at all with this team. Like, Bledsoe and the Przingis would be nice, but like, Bledsoe's 28 years old. These Knicks are not going to be good for quite a while. I just don't think it's right. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, with Jose Calderon being on the team, that means LeBron James is their point guard. I think the question with them is... Would Phoenix take anything besides the Brooklyn pick? Like, would they take two future firsts from the Cavs? Would the Cavs be willing to do it? I pretty much lean towards no on all of that, but I guess there's a little sliver of life for that one. I think the Denver Nuggets just make the most sense in terms of his age, the salaries that they could send back to Phoenix, and all that stuff.